Hey everyone, in this video we are going to begin the process of styling the navbar. So if I zoom in on the page here, you can see that the background color of the navbar is the same as the rest of the page. You can see that we have styling for the border of the navbar, we've increased the font size of the text in the navbar, as well as increasing the height of the navbar and applying some other styling. So to do this, we're going to come to the navbar styling post, and this is what we're going to be doing. So Currently the navbar is not looking too good, so in this tutorial we're going to begin fixing that by adding some styling. So if you come over here to the development server, and I'll zoom in over here, and you can see that the navbar is not looking too good. The background color, the border styling, and you can barely even see the text, but if you could, it's not the proper size that we want. The height of the navbar isn't the size that we want. So we're going to be adding that styling and more styling to the navbar in this video. So we're going to be targeting these CSS classes provided by the default theme to apply the styling we want. So we're going to look at the navbar, site name, links, search box, nav links, nav item, and drop down title classes. And to locate these classes, we're going to take a look at the HTML of the blog by inspecting the browser, going to the elements tab, and then selecting an element on the page. Now, after locating the classes, we'll be applying the styling to the index.style file, which will globally apply the styles. And then finally, we'll be describing the styling in detail. Now, you want to make sure that you start the local development server, which should be running at localhost port 8080, to see the changes we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing after you save them, then you want to try restarting your local development server. So like I have over here, I have um, the localhost, the development server running over here at localhost port 8080, and I have it running right down here in this terminal. All right. And when adding the styling updates, you want to be sure to add each block of code below one at a time to your project, then view the changes in the browser to get a better understanding of what each block is responsible for. And you can also view all the code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 13 branch of the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. So you can come right here and you can get all of the code that we will be using in this video. All right, so let's move on to the navbar class. So we're now ready to begin styling the navbar. So this is the HTML location of the navbar class. So this is where the navbar class is located. So you can see it's inside of this body tag right here. Then we have our div tag with an ID of app, div tag with an ID of global layout. And then we have a div tag right here with the class of theme container. And then inside of there, we have our header tag with the class of navbar. So if we come over to the site, let me just move myself out of the way. And if we inspect the page, you can see right here we have our body tag, our div tag with a class or with an ID of app, and then we have our div tag with an ID of global layout. And then we have our div tag down here with the class of theme container. And then right inside of there, we have our header tag with the class of navbar. So this is what we are going to begin styling the navbar with, is this navbar class right here. So from the HTML above, we can see that the navbar class is attached to a header tag and is a child of the div tag with a class of theme container. So this means in the index.style file, we can nest the navbar class inside of the theme container class and apply the following styles. So if we come over here, and I'm just going to close this terminal, and this is what we're going to want to add to the index.style files, this styling right here. So I will copy this, and we'll come over to the theme container, and we'll just paste in the styles and then we'll save the file. So you can see that we've added this navbar class right here, which is nested inside of this theme container class. And we've added a display flex. And this defines a flex container for all of the direct children of the header tag with the class of navbar. And then we have a line item center, and this will vertically center the flex items so that means the direct children of the header tag with the class of navbar. And then we have this height of 4.5 rem, and this sets the height of the navbar to be 4.5 rem. And then we have our background color, and this sets the background color of the navbar to be this background color, which is a global styling variable we set in the palette.style file. And then we have this border bottom width of 0.125 rem, 
and this sets the border bottom width of the nav bar to be 0 0.125 rem. So if we come back over to the site and we come down here to the nav bar class, if you come over here, you can see all of the styling that we just added, this display flex, the align items, the height, the background color, and then the border bottom width. It's all right down here in this class of nav bar. And let me just move myself out of the way. So now you can see up here in the nav bar that we've added our background color and we've updated the border bottom width of the nav bar as well as increasing the height of the nav bar. So you can see that the height's been increased and we've added a display flex to it and we've aligned the items by vertically centering them. All right, so that's the navbar class. Now the next class we want to look at is the site name class. So after locating and styling the navbar class, we're ready to move on to the site name class. So if we take a look at the HTML location of it, we'll see that it's located inside of the header tag of the class of navbar. If we open that up, we'll see this div tag right here with the class of sidebar button. And then on the same level as that, we have this A tag. And this has a class of home link. And inside of that A tag right there, we will have our image tag, which is the logo up in the nav bar. And then we have our span tag, and that has a class of site name. So if we come over to the site, and I'm just going to move myself up there in that corner. And if we inspect up here. And if we go inside of this header tag, and then inside of there we have our A tag. And then inside of that we have our image tag, and that's the logo up in the nav bar. And then we have our span tag right here with the class of site name. All right, so from the HTML above, we can see that the site name class is attached to a span tag and is a child of the A tag with a class of home link, which is a child of the header tag with a class of nav bar. All right, so this is the styling that we'll be adding. So this means in the index.style file, we can nest the site name class inside of the navbar class and apply the following style. So if we come over here and we're just going to copy in this styling for the site name class. So let's copy that. And then we'll come in over here under the navbar class and I'll pay, paste in this styling and we'll save the file. So what this styling is doing is we're targeting the site name class, which we can do by nesting it under the navbar class right here. And we're just increasing the font size of it to be 1.5 rem. So that's what we're doing. We're just increasing the font size of the site name in the navbar, which is that code monkeys text to be 1.5 rem. So if we come back over to the site, you can see now that the font size right up here has been increased. We come down here to our span tag with the class of site name. You can see that the font size is now 1.5 rem. All right, so that is the site name class. And now let's move on to the links class. So we're now ready to style the links class. So we're going to start by finding that HTML location of it. So this is the location of the links class in the HTML. So it's inside of that header tag with the class of navbar. And then it's on the same level as that A tag that we just used, which had the site name class inside of it. And then we have our div tag with a class of links. So if we come back over here, and if we close this A tag, you see right down here underneath of it on the same level as the A tag that we just looked at, we have our div tag with a class of links. And let me see if I can move myself out of the way of the links over there. So. This is the div tag with the class of links, and this is the class that we will be applying styling for. So from the HTML above, we can see that the links class is attached to a div tag and is a child of the header tag with a class of navbar. All right, so this is the styling. So this means in the index.style file, we can nest the links class inside of the navbar class and apply the following styles. So come down here and we will copy in the links class styling and we will add that 
right here on the same level as the site name class, which is nested inside of the navbar class right here. And we'll save the file. And this is the styling that we've added. So we have set the background color to be transparent. So what this does is it sets the background color behind the search box and of the links on the right side of the nav bar to be transparent. And this has the effect of showing the background color set in the nav bar class since it's no longer being covered by the background color set in the links class because it has a value of transparent instead of some other color. And then we've also set a height of three rems so that sets the height of the div tag which contains the search box and the links on the right side of the nav bar to be three rem and then we have used a line item center here to vertically center the flex items and what we mean by that the flex items right here is the direct children of the div tag with a class of links which was given a style of display flex by the default theme so that's why we can use this align item center because the default theme gave this div tag with the class of links, it gave it this display flex value. All right, so if we come over here, you can see the styling updates. So we have our div tag with the class of links down here. And then you can see that we set the background color of it to be transparent right down here. So what this does is it removes that background color that was being set behind the search box and behind these links to now be transparent, which lets that nav bar background color be shown. And then we've also increased the height of this section to be three rem, as well as aligning the items with vertically aligning the items in the center. So, and we can use that align items because we have our display flex value, which was provided by the default theme right down there. All right. So that is the links class. And now we'll be taking a look at styling the search box class. So we finished styling the links class, and now we're going to begin the styling of the search box class. So let's start off by looking for that HTML location. So here's the location of the search box class in the HTML. So you can see right down here that inside of that div tag with the class of links, which is inside of our header tag with the class of nav bar, if we open that up, you'll find our div tag right here with a class of search box. And this is the class that we will be applying styling to. So from the HTML above, we can see that the search box class is attached to a div tag and is a child of the div tag with a class of links. Now, this means in the index.style file, we can nest the search box class inside of the links class and apply the following styles. So, if we come down here, this is the styling we will be adding to the search box. So let me come over here to our index.style file, and I'll be copying in this styling right here. And we're going to be nesting this in the links class. So let me save the file. Now we'll look at the styling. So you can see over here we have our search box class, which is nested inside of our links class. And we're going to start off by adding a margin right of 1.5 rem. And this adds a margin of 1.5 rem to the right of the search box. And then we're going to be targeting this input tag, which is a child of the search box class right here. So the div tag right up here with the class of search box. If we were to open that up, we would have an input tag inside of there. And what we are doing with that is... We are setting the font size to be this value right here of 1.125 rem. And that is going to set the font size of the text in the input tag right there. And then we're going to add a background color of transparent. So this sets the background color of the input tag to be transparent. And this has the effect of showing the background color set in the navbar class, since it's no longer being covered by the background color set in the input tag. And which was that white value that we saw. And then we're going to set the border width to be 0.125 rem. And this sets the width of the border around the input tag. So around our search box there to be 0.125 rem. And then we're going to update the color right here to be this text color. So this sets the color of the text in the input tag to be text color, which is the global styling variable we set in the palette.style file. All right. So if we come over here, to our navbar now 
you can see we have our div tag with a class of links. And then inside of there, we have our div tag with a class of search box. And then if we come over to that, you can see now we have our margin, right? Right there of 1.5 rem. And that's that orange bit right up there. That, so you can see that margin that we set right there. And inside of there, we have our input tag. So this is where we've applied the other styling to. So you can see that we've added our background color to now be transparent. So we should have right up here. Yep, there it is. So we have our background color, which is now transparent. So that lets the background color of the nav bar be shown instead of that white color that was set. And then we've also added a border width of 0 0.125 rem. So this is what we're looking at right there is that search box right up there, that input tag. And we've increased, we've set that uh, border width to be 0 0.125 rem. And then we've added a color. So a text color to be the text color variable from the pal.style file. And then we've updated the font size to be 1.125 rem. So if you come over here, you can see that if we start typing inside of here, you could see that we've set the, the font size. We've increased the font size here, and then we've set the color. All right. So now this tip right here, which was just to see the font size and the color styles in action, you want to try typing some text in the search box like we just did. And then once you click in the search box, you'll notice that the border gets its color set to be the accent color. And this is a global styling variable we set in the palette.style file. And this effect is provided by the default theme and it uses the focus pseudo class. So if you come back over here, if we start typing again, you'll notice that once we click in there, it gets that border color around, it gets updated to be the accent color. And that styling is provided by the default theme with using that pseudo focus class right there. So that's right down here. If you were to inspect the page, you could see this focus class that's being used right there to update the border color. All right. So now we're going to take a look at the nav links class. So now that we've styled the search box class and its child input tag, we're ready to move on to the styling of the nav links class. So we're going to start off again by looking for the HTML location. So this is the, the location of the nav links class in the HTML. So you can see we have our header tag with the class of navbar, and we're going to open that up. We have our div tag with the class of links. And then inside of that, we have this nav tag with a class of nav links. So from the HTML above, we can see that the nav links class is attached to a nav tag and is a child of the div tag with the class of links. All right. So this means for the styling, that in the index.style file, we can nest the nav links class inside of the links class and apply the following style. So we'll come over here to our index.style file and we'll copy in this styling right here. And if we come over underneath of our input tag and we will paste this in and then we will save. And what we've done here is we've targeted the nav links class which is inside of the links class right here. And we're just setting the font size of the nav links to be 1.25 rem. All right, so like I said, this just sets the font size of the nav links on the right side of the nav bar to be 1.25 rem. So if we come over here to the site, you can see that our nav links up here, the font size has increased. So inside, and let's just close out this search box class. So inside of this div tag with the class of links, we have our nav tag right here the class of nav links and you can see that we've set the font size right here to be 1.25 rem of the nav links so you can see that we've increased that font size right there all right so that is the nav links class and now we're going to take a look at the nav item class all right so we're now ready to style the nav item class and to do that again we're going to first look for the html location so this is the HTML location of the nav item class. So we have our div tag with a class of links. And then inside of there, we have that nav tag with a class of nav links. And then inside of there, we have our div tag. We're going to have four div tags here, and each one's going to have a class of nav item. All right. 
So from the HTML above, we can see that there are four nav item classes and each one is attached to a div tag and is a child of the nav tag with the class of nav links. All right, so for the styling, this means in the index.style file, we can nest the nav item class inside of the nav links class and apply the following styles. So let's come over here and we are going to copy this styling right here and then we're going to come down over here into our index.style file and we will paste this in and then we will save the file so you can see that we are targeting the nav item class right here which is nested inside of the nav links class and what we are doing is we have this nav item first child and this applies the first child pseudo class to the nav item selector so the first child pseudo class applies the styles defined inside of it to the first element among a group of sibling elements, which in our case is the first div tag with a class of nav item in the group of sibling div tags that have a class of nav item. So basically if we come back up here to the HTML, what this is doing right here is it's applying this styling of margin left to the first div tag with a class of nav item among this sibling group of div tags right here with the class of nav item. So we're just targeting the first div tag right here with the class of nav item and we're setting the margin left of it to be zero. All right. So then we are, so like I said, we have that margin left to zero that adds a margin of zero to the left of the first div tag with the class of nav item within that group of sibling div tags that have a class of nav item. And then we're going to be targeting the nav item class right here. And this adds a margin of 1.75 rem to the left of all of the div tags that have a class of nav item except for the first one, since that is being styled by the first child pseudo class. All right, so if we come over here to our development server, and if we go inside of the nav tag right here, you can see that we have all of our div tags right here with the class of nav item. And then you can see right here for the first one, which we've targeted using this first child pseudo class you can see that the margin left has been set to zero so you can see that sets the margin left there to be zero and then if we look at these other div tags right here you can see that the margin left has been set to 1.75 rem for these div tags with class of nav item right up there so if we take that off you can see that that's handling the margin left right there and that's being set for these other nav items all right, and then the first one right there, just setting that margin left of zero. All right. So what we can now do is now we're going to look at the drop down title class. All right, so after finishing the styling for the nav item class, we're now ready to move on to the styling of the drop down title class. So this is the HTML location. So here's the location of the drop down title class in the HTML. So inside of our nav tag right here with the class of nav links, we have our first div tag here with the class of nav item. And then we have our next div tag here with the class of nav item. And then if we were to open that up, we would have a div tag right here with the class of drop down wrapper. And then if we open that up, we'd have our button tag right here, and this would have a class of dropdown title. All right. So from the HTML above, we can see that the dropdown title class is attached to a button tag and is a child of the div tag with a class of dropdown wrapper. So right up here. And that is a child tag of the div tag with a class of nav item. So right up there. All right. So that's where it's located in the HTML. And for the styling, this means in the index.style file, we can nest the dropdown title class inside of the nav item class and apply the following style to it. So if we come down here, let's go back to our index.style file and we will copy this style right here. And we'll come underneath of the navbar class. And then we will add that styling and we will save it so you can see that we've added this drop-down title class and we've nested it inside of the nav item class and we are setting the font size of it to be 1.25 rem. So this font size of 1.25 rem sets the font size of the drop-down title which is that post text to be 1.25 rem. So 
if you come back over here to the site, you can see if we go inside of, we have our nav tag here with the class of nav links. And then if we go to the second div tag here with the class of nav item, and if we open this up, you can see we have this div tag here with the class of dropdown wrapper. And then we're going to open that up. And then right here we have our button tag with a class of dropdown title. And then you can see right over here that we've set the font size to be 1.25 rem. So you can see that that increases the font size of the text there of that post to be 1.25 rem. All right. So that is the navbar styling. Now, if you have any questions about the CSS discussed above, then you can check out these resources. So we have one just for CSS in general. And then we have one for the basic concepts of Flexbox, as well as a complete guide to Flexbox, and one for pseudo classes. So we looked at the focus pseudo class and the first child pseudo class. So if you have any questions about any of this, then you can use these links. All right, so in this video, we just started the process of styling the nav bar. And let me just move myself down here. So we started the process of styling the nav bar. We targeted and we did that by targeting these CSS classes that were provided by the default theme. So the nav bar class, the site name class, the links class, the search box, the nav links, the nav item, and the drop down title classes, which are all classes provided by the default theme. And we did that by starting up our local development server inspecting the browser, looking at the elements tab right here. And then we went through and we selected certain elements in the nav bar to figure out where they were in the HTML of the site. So we figured out that location in the HTML and then we applied our styling to our index.style file. All right, so you can see up here that now our nav bar has a background color that matches the rest of the page. We've increased the font size of the text in the nav bar. We've added styling for this border down here. We've adjusted the margins up here for these nav links classes. And we've also added styling up here for the text in the input tag. And we've added, and basically we've just made, made the nav bar look much nicer and much cleaner for the site. So in the next video, we are going to be adding styling right here for this drop down menu inside of the nav bar. All right, so that's what we'll be doing in the next tutorial. We'll be styling the drop down menu in the nav bar by updating the background color, the border, the padding, etc. So that's what we'll be updating. And then you'll also notice over here in our search results that the we need to update this styling as well. So we will also be doing that in a future tutorial. But to start with, we're going to be looking at this drop down menu right here. All right. So that's what we'll be doing in the next video.